Look at that. Not bad for a first time cooking ca caveman style. What's up guys? Thanks for tuning in to Good Morning Griller. As you can see, I got my fire already going in the morning. It's 7 a.m. And I'm, a I'm actually on a family camping trip right now and we're somewhere in higher elevation along the mountains of New Hampshire in Mount Monadnock. Beautiful, beautiful morning. Forecast is gonna be sunny. It's gonna be hot and humid. Dog days of summer in August, of course. But uh, if you like beef, well, you're in for a treat today because I'm gonna be using a, a different cooking method that I've never done before, caveman style. So wish me luck. I hope I have the uh, good hands to be doing this for you guys. So don't forget to like the video at the end, all right? All right, let's bring out that meat. Got a nice piece of London broil here. I'm not gonna do anything special. I'm just gonna dust it with a little salt and do a caveman style. As you can see, the thick piece of meat is probably about maybe a little bit over an inch thick. Give me a close up. See the marbling, the fat. Not too much marbling, but good enough for me. The little flies around here. But most people like to remove the gristle and the membrane and all that stuff. Not me. I mean, if I'm gonna pay close to nine, ten dollars for a piece of meat, I'm gonna use every <laughs> every ounce of that. Plus, I think it'll provide a little bit more flavor. So let's get this uh, seasoned with salt. Like I said nothing special. Just a quick dusting of salt. I'm not gonna add any pepper because pepper is gonna burn on the coal and it's gonna give it a little bitter taste to it. I don't want to do that. I want to avoid that. Slap the meat. Turn it over. Season this side. How's that look? Nice and salted. Ready to go in a hot cold air. All right, it's my first time doing this, so wish me luck. I think we'll be okay, though. <laughs> I think. Get one final pat down. Let's do this, guys. Oh, my coals feel really, really hot. Here we go. Oh, this piece separated. I don't think it's gonna take too long. I definitely just want a nice, crusty exterior and soft interior, and that's about it. Right now, it's definitely sizzling. Ain't gonna take too long. Now let's give this a quick look on the underside. Wow, not so bad. Look at that. I was expecting a lot more char to be um, stuck to the piece of meat there, but not bad. Now I'm gonna check back in on my steak. <laughs> look at this. Nice, right? Let's turn it over. The other side. We'll be done pretty shortly. The sauce I want to show you how to make is actually a. Uh, it's called perhok in my in my language. It's uh, uniquely Cambodian, but it's a fantastic sauce. Um, it's it's spicy. It's herby. It's salty. It's uh, it does have a fermented fish base, but if you if done right, you won't really taste it. But you'll you'll definitely find it at. Any Cambodian cookout, any Cambodian house party, and any 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 Cambodian event, especially with steak, it's great with clams as well. Let's get going on the sauce. All right, so here I got my lemongrass. These are my uh, fresh chilies, fresh pick from my uh, garden. I'm very proud of that. I started that in April, and definitely sprouting and blossoming and providing me the spice that I need. Oh, this smoke is killing me right now. Hold on a second, guys. Here I got my Thai eggplants. These are baby eggplants, also called turkey pea eggplants. Very, very bitter. I wouldn't recommend eating this alone. And also for my garden, my Thai basil. Look how lush and green that is. I'm proud of these also. So first thing I'm gonna do, oh yeah, before we begin, this is um, the base of my sauce. This is fermented fish. Um, if I can give you any, any, any indication what it would taste like, think of, uh, stinky smelly fish sitting in a jar for maybe months on end that's exactly what it would taste like by itself <laughs> it's definitely overwhelming but when you 
when executed right and blended with the right ingredients, believe me, it's a wonderful sauce for steak, or especially in the Cambodian culture. So let's begin, guys. Let me throw these on the, let me throw my lemongrass on the pot. Cast iron here. And then I roast my chilies. And then my uh, baby eggplant. Oh, this fire is crazy. The smoke is killing me. Oh, it's very hot. I burned my gloves, but it's all right. Won't take too long. All right, I got my cup of boiling water, my cup of water here, and I'm gonna bring it to a boil. So uh, finish cooking off the fish paste. All right, guys, let me show you how to pound the fish paste. Let me add this fresh Thai basil here, some lemongrass. I'm gonna give these a rough chop. Some chilies here. Now, depending on your preference, I like my sauces to be more thick in consistency, mainly because when I dip my steak in there, I wanna pick up as much of the sauce as I can. Here's my, here's my uh, cooked baby eggplant here. I'm gonna add a little bit more because I like the bitter component of the uh, baby eggplant. So, holding all these ingredients over the fish paste. I'm gonna add a little more chili pepper because I like it spicy. Just keep folding and chopping away. I hope you guys uh, uh, like my new knife here. Why not put a little more lemongrass in? Oh, this knife is just cutting through the lemongrass. I think I, put, I did a pretty good job sharpening it earlier. All right, I think I got it down to the consistency that I want. Give it a look. See how chunky that is? Very colorful. Red, green, char, brown. Beautiful color palette. All right, let's get this in the bowl. Mmm, stinky. But it's gonna be delicious. Oh, spilled a little. Slowly working the water. Give it a taste. Oh yeah, it's spicy. And I'm gonna add a little, a little cane sugar, not too much. Just to give it a little balance. Add a little fresh lime. Just to kind of balance the saltiness. One final taste test. Oh, yep, that's right there, that is it. Right, I'm gonna slice these tomatoes. Probably about maybe a quarter inch thick slices. Nothing fancy. These are really sweet. When you grow your own tomatoes, oh, oh, they take on a completely different flavor than what you get at the supermarket. I gotta eat this one. Oh yeah, it's so sweet. I'm gonna plate these up and then I'll show you what my cucumber looks like. This is my cucumbers. Look at the monstrosity on that. <laughs> Peel off the thick skin here. Right on the ground there. Look at the white flesh. I'll give you a little cross section of what it looks like also. And then I'll show you the seeds. See how big those seeds are? Yeah. Really big. Not edible, hard to chew on. But the, uh, the flesh is definitely still, still has a, like a firmness and snap to it. Get us, grab a spoon and you can core out the seeds, leaving the flesh behind. See? Looks good. Mm. I hope my mic is uh, picking up on the crunch there. Delicious. Fresh too. Oh. Healthy. And one final feel, just to determine what kind of uh, cooking level we're at here. Alright. Right, I definitely want this center area here to be 
little bit more on the rare side because again, this is a London broil. It's not a prime cut piece of meat. But that should do it. You guys a little close up. Look at that. Yeah. I'm excited. This is gonna go with my uh, fermented fish Cambodian for hulk sauce. That's what we call it. It's gonna be great. Let's get this on the cutting board. All right. Woo. Almost bigger than my chopping board there. But almost as perfectly shaped as my cutting board. I'm gonna let that rest for about 10 minutes. You don't want it to cut into it immediately because then it'll, it'll lose all the juices. And I'm just gonna sprinkle a little salt to finish it off. Oh my, my, my. Look at this meal. meal that's fit for a king. Let's slice into this meat and see how it looks on the inside. Oh, look at the juice running from that. Ha! Yeah, good morning griller. Didn't, like, didn't let you guys down. That's a, oh, crap. So you got the nice little crusty ring there. Red interior. All right, what's more important, let's see how it tastes. beef here. Mmm. Mmm. Really, really juicy. We get the tomato. Break off some cucumber here. Dip into my uh, traditional Cambodian Pahok sauce. We call it Pahok with fermented fish paste. See the chili, baby eggplant seeds, and lemongrass, garlic and all that. Yeah. Now I'll get a little more sauce on. That's what I want. Mmm, mmm, mmm. I'm gonna take a rarer piece of meat. Give me a cross section of the color. Oh man. And a cucumber and tomato on top of that. Put a little my special sauce on. Yeah. <laughs> Bite of heaven again, guys. This is really good. If you guys like this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you guys got your own Prahok recipes or Cambodian sauce recipes, you know, leave it in the comments. I definitely like to respond, read and respond to, you know, to your questions or any suggestions. I love to learn. I'm, life, I'm a lifelong learner. But until then, please don't forget to like. Please don't forget to, forget to subscribe. You can follow me on Instagram at Good Morning Griller. It's right here. And then until the next video, as always, guys. Make the best of where you're at with what you have. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you soon.